what your body actually needs needs is movement mm-hmm. because your energy when your nervous system is frozen it's like your energy in your body is actually frozen mm-hmm. in order to get out of that state you have to move the energy in your body All right, Carrie, I am so excited to have you on. I know you and I have been connecting and following each other on Instagram for a while, and it's so fun to find other people that are in that same sort of space, but different enough. Like we have the same sort of core principles, core values. We believe in the same sorts of things, but we approach it from very different perspectives. And I think that that's one of the beautiful things about there is a million different things that we can be doing online. And even there's like no competition, right? We're all in this collaboration and supporting each other. And so I'm really excited to dive in with you today about flow and alignment and how that really shows up in our life and how that really merges together with our sense of purpose and what we're really meant to be doing and all these amazing topics. Before we get into all that juicy goodness, do you want to share a little bit about you? Yes, I would love to. Mm. This conversation is going to be so good. And first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm stoked about this conversation, chatting with you. Yeah. Uh, Real quick, I'm Carrie. I'm the owner of Carrie Unconfidently. I am a holistic business coach. So I come at business from a mind body business perspective. So we look at the, the whole picture, all the pieces, because I truly believe that your business only grows as far as you grow, right? Mm -hmm. So we look at all of the pieces. So I really help elevate women women well-being so they can be their best well-rounded CEO self have kick-ass marketing I've been in marketing and sales for 15 years and I help women just you know find really live in alignment and live their purpose and make it profitable but in the most simple free aligned way possible Mm -hmm. so I have a really bad burnout story so my mission now is to help women uh, do business a different way really in a way that that protects their energy and their mental health and really allows them to live a life that they love without the burnout, the hustle and the overwhelm. Yeah. Well, and I think it's so powerful. You talked about like, even just recently, one of the business mastermind groups that I'm in, there was a girl, a couple of girls that were talking about like, I don't know anybody that does, you know, like fitness entrepreneur based, like watching your business and your body grow at the same time. And I was like, uh, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's what I do, right? Yep. Like mine comes from this place. Like I even posted something recently about your business only grows to the level in which your body feels, right? Like if you feel like your body is exhausted and worn out and has no energy and you're feeling like you're skipping your workouts and you're scrapping on no food and you're not drinking water, like duh, your business is not going to grow very well. Like your body is the vehicle, right? Your body is the thing that is getting to you to where you want to go. And so for me, like looking at your cycles and how that integrates to the body makes such a huge difference. I know that you look at it in a much bigger, different way too. And so I think it'll be beautiful to have the conversation together. So I know, like, let's just describe you and I both have kind of thrown out the words like flow and alignment right off the bat. What would you describe your definition of those? Because I think maybe somebody listening might have their own definition, but what does alignment and getting into flow really mean for you? That's a great question. So I spent the better half of my career in corporate America. So I was conditioned to be 100% in the masculine where lacking sleep was a badge of honor. Hustle Mm -hmm. was an achievement. Success equals worth. And so, you know, you're conditioned to think that you have to struggle and work really hard and work all the time to make any kind of progress. And so it's that pushing and chasing and hustling that is so detrimental to our bodies, especially as women, as you know, Mm -hmm. but to our nervous systems. And so when we're in that state, our nervous system acknowledges this as danger or threat. So it is going to activate your stress response and do anything in its power to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And so when you feel the overwhelm, the perfectionism, all the things, anxiety, depression, those are protective mechanisms that your nervous system is using to try to bring you back to safety. And so when you are in this state, it's like you are just pushing like a huge boulder up a hill. Mm -hmm. And that's what your business is like if you are not taking care of your mind, taking care of your body, regulating your nervous system. It is like knocking your head against a wall (laughs) with no 
results, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the that is not being in flow. And so when you're in flow, it just feel you have this sense of ease. Not that it's easy. Building a mm-hmm. business is not easy, but it can feel easy. So when you are 100% living your purpose, when you are speaking your truth without censorship, when you are living your life in a way that you love to, you naturally fall into alignment and you feel this sense of flow and you just kind of show up and do your thing and share your message. And it's almost like money falls from the sky. You know, ideal clients are just attracted to you because you are in this state of joy and gratitude. And you know, I mean, this really comes from the nervous system, but when you are vibrating at that type of frequency, everything is just drawn to you. Mm -hmm. So I mean, when you're in flow, just things feel easy. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. And I will say like for me before my business was all about checking off the to-do list, right? Like I'm doing all of the steps. I'm doing exactly what everybody else is saying works and it's working for everybody else around me. I see it. I know the tangible practical things are working like that, the, the, but there was still something disconnecting, right? Like there was still some reason why my business was not thriving like the people around around me were, even though we were using the same principles, I was using the same tools, everything. But I think a lot of it had to do with this alignment piece and how powerful that is and why when we're operating out of alignment, why it doesn't matter how hard we push or how hard we shove or how hard we hustle at the end of it, we're just exhausted and wiped out and burnt out, right? Like we've both been in that same spot. So what are some of those costs of really being out of alignment? So, I mean, there are a lot of symptoms that bubble up when you are not in alignment. I would say, first of all, you are going to know you are not in alignment because it takes 10 times more energy to do the same amount of work. Mm -hmm. And that really taxes your body and your mind. So, you know, when you're feeling every day, when it's free, you know, when you're feeling things frequently, obviously we're emotions, we're going to feel fatigue or anxiety sometimes. But when you're living your life in a constant state of exhaustion, of overwhelm, of anxiety, that clenched chest, always like need feeling like you need to be doing something or going somewhere. That's a sign you are not living like in your truth, right? Yeah. And I will say you'll see probably relationships kind of suffer. Money might be kind of stifled a little bit. It just, it feels when you're not in alignment, it just feels like life is just harder, doing Mm -hmm. things harder. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, and I think that that going back to the idea of like it taking 10 times as long, like I know we've all been there where you're sitting there staring at a computer screen, trying to force yourself to get something done. And it's just not working no matter what. Like I am in that right now. I'm like, I've got to write this launch stuff. I've got to get it out. And I just don't (laughs) want to do it. And I mean, some of it is resistance, right? Like there's this element of resisting something that's challenging, resisting something that's hard, resisting something that is outside of our comfort zone, right? There's some element of like, we butt up against things like it's going to be different, right? We're not going to always, like you said, easy, right? We're not going to always feel comfortable in our business. We're all not always going to feel like, oh, this is a cakewalk. Like there's going to be these elements that require us to level up and grow to the next level. And that can feel this little bit of challenge and uncomfortability and growth. And so I think what I've noticed is a lot of times there's, we see in this feminine, space, right? People talking about building a business a feminine way, this element of avoiding everything that's not comfortable, right? Like it has to be in alignment, but in that alignment space, it comes from this, like everything's going to feel good and wonderful all of the time versus sometimes we are going to feel a little bit of challenge and discomfort when we're doing something that is requiring us to level up. So how would you kind of describe that difference? How do you acknowledge and separate out the two of like, what's resistance that this is not meant for us. This is out of alignment for us versus this is resistance because this is us growing and stepping outside of our comfort zone. Right. So I think that's a really good point because a lot of the times when you are on the right path, when you are growing and becoming the person that you need to be to build this empire business, you are going to feel resistance. And a lot of times that means you are on the right path, right? So there is a difference between resistance you're feeling because it's this nervousness, this fear that you need to tackle to grow and go to the next step versus this resistance of like, ugh, you know, I just like can't even think about doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So 
Honestly, I, and tell me if you agree, but I think it really comes down to tapping into your intuition and being so hyper connected to your body and what the signals, what the the body is telling you, because the body is basically the subconscious mind. It is always speaking to you, even when you don't think it is. And so when all of these symptoms bubble up, like anxiety, for example, that it's not because you're an anxious person, right? It is your body trying to say, Hey, 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 I, I need your attention, something's off, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think really tapping into your those gut feelings and really getting curious about what your body is telling you. And so I, you know, with clients, I like to ask, is it this idea? Is it contracting? Or is it expansive? So when you say, you know, like when I say I'm a holistic business coach, do I kind of contract? Do my shoulders kind of fall inwards? Do I kind of tense up? Or do I expand? Do I smile? Mm. Do I kind of like radiate a little bit? And when you ask somebody about a certain topic or a job title or, you know, opportunity, you can see that immediately in their body language Mm -hmm. and their reaction. So I think just being super connected to your body and what it's telling you, because that response is going to lead you down, whether it leads you down the path of whether it is for you or not for you. Yeah, no. Yeah. And I would agree. Like there's so many times where I'm like in my gut, (laughs) this does, does not feel good. Like this does not feel right. I do not want to do this. Like not, whereas right now it's like, I just really don't want to write this because I really don't want to write it. Like I just don't, I don't, there's a difference, right? Like there's a difference between me not wanting to sit down and write because it's hard and it's challenging me. It's challenging me. I don't want to even say hard because I think when we say hard, that has a different frame of mind. I think it's, it's challenging me. It's pushing me to think and be creative and outside of my box. And so I'm having to put more brain power and mind into it. And so I need to be in the right space. And so that's kind of the element there versus there's times where I'm like, this just does not feel right. Like to my core, it's either maybe against my values and against who I am as a person. And I know that was something you and I talked a little bit about before was like the sense of purpose being inside of you. But I think that sometimes for me, it's like that, like, you know, through and through who you are deep down. And if you don't, that's like an area to begin to explore and you can and always be exploring who that person is. But I think through and through, like, you know, deep down, if this feels good or like, expansive, like you said, or if it feels like it contracts and pulls you in. And I think that is it. But I also think that is a skill, right? Like learning to listen to that is not something I've noticed with a lot of clients. It's a new thing for them. Like l- stopping and listening to that is not something that a lot of women have been taught, especially in that masculine sort of space. We haven't been taught to slow down down and actually listen to that or honor that. Or even just a few weeks ago, I was listening to like a bunch of motivational videos on YouTube. And I was like, I just want something to like, give me feeling really positive before my day. I was like, I want to turn something on in the shower. And they were all like, push hard, push past your excuses. The early bird rises is the up before the dawn and rise and push is as hard. Like do the hard things if you want an easy life. And this whole thing, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so depressed. Like after listening to these motivational videos, because I've realized like how far I've pulled in that other direction. Whereas five years ago, that probably would have motivated me and got me all excited and ramped up. And now I've realized like how just exhausting that feels. So I know I kind of like spewed and just randomly threw a bunch of stuff at you in a bunch of different ways, but you take it wherever you want to go with that. (laughs) Okay. So first of all, I'm going to talk about that toxic motivation because it is everywhere. I think the, I think the industry is changing and we're Mm -hmm. seeing less of that, but I still am a, I'm a big voice when it comes to this because coaches that say just push through if they only knew how the body worked, especially the nervous system, if some, if a nervous system is frozen, if they have gotten to the point where they're past fight or flight, they are overwhelmed to the point they are frozen and they're paralyzed and can't move. Just pushing through is the most detrimental thing or piece of advice you could Mm -hmm. tell somebody because they actually cannot push through until they restore the body. Mm -hmm. And so I just love that you and I are creating education around that, but I won't say hustle is a bad word, right? We have to work hard to make business happen, but it is so, so important to be taking care 
of your nervous system, of your body, feeding yourself, right? Taking the right supplements, cycle tracking mm-hmm. it, in order to maximize the output, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you said this before, you know, you can get results by pushing, mm-hmm. but only so far, you mm-hmm. know, you're going to hit a wall. And that's what I, four years ago, I hit a wall, my nervous system basically just froze and I burnt out and I could not get out of bed. I fell into a deep depression and it took me a year plus to restore my mind and body. And so that experience plus five years ago, I'm taking this out of the business realm, but I think a lot of women can resonate with this. I married a narcissist and I had no idea what a narcissist was at that point. And I was super successful in my career. I had a lot of accolades and I was very, very confident. And by the end of that relationship, I had lost all my self-worth. I, my mental health had gone to shit. I hope I can curse on you. (laughs) (laughs) And I just, I thought everything was wrong with me. But it so it started then, you know, I started to explore what these emotions meant and how I felt in that scenario and with him and certain people. And you're right. And then the burnout happened. And so I further researched and discovered and tested things with my body in these life circumstances and experiences, you really get to know your body and Mm -hmm. your mind. And that emotional intelligence that is born is such a beautiful thing. And I think it is honestly the the number one asset us entrepreneurs can Mm -hmm. have to be able to manage our emotions because that's the connection between the body. Yeah. Emotions drive behavior, behavior drives results, you know, and if we can really be in like in one with our bodies and our emotions, I mean, we can guys the limit basically. Yeah. Well, and I think even just thinking back, like, so I was on a coaching call earlier this morning and there was this conversation about there are some days when I just don't have the energy energy, right? And some days I just want to rest and I feel like, but then there's also this element of like perpetual staying in that state of just like, I'm going to listen to my body and I'm just going to rest. And so we had this like kind of challenging conversation about pushing through, like you, sometimes you do have to push through these moments in these lulls of maybe where is it self-sabotage and where is it actually listening to your body and how do you conjure up energy on those days when you do have something you have to kind of get through and push through and things like that. So we had this conversation about like the chicken and the egg, like which one comes first, right? Like your body is influencing your habits and the life and the actions that you're taking. And then the habits and the actions that you're taking in your life are influencing the way your body feels. So this kind of dynamic thing back and forth about there's days that you're going to have no energy and you're going to feel depleted and you're going to feel exhausted because you have a mile list things of life and kids and whatever that you have to get done. And so then the question becomes, Becomes, what does my body need to actually meet the demands of the day? And what does my my mind need to meet the demands of the day versus the other way around, right? Like, so it's kind of this balance back and forth and this ebb and flow of honoring our body and then also changing the, the routines and the lifestyles to kind of meet back and forth. And so it's kind of this, I keep doing this. <laughs> it's like this dynamic kind of rolling and mixing together to create this like symbiotic thing. But in your space, what have you noticed in that sense? too, of like honoring and listening to your intuition, listening to your body, listening to your mind, and yet still at the same time being committed to taking those actionable results? Yeah, that's a hard question. So what I've found as a coach for 10 plus years now, I really, I like to ask certain questions because a lot of the times when people say they are tired and need to rest, is that a true physiological feeling or is it an avoidant tactic? Right. It's an avoidant tactic. Tactic, it usually is because your nervous system is now frozen and you want to do everything to avoid actually taking the action. But in that case, and that is self-sabotage, that is mm-hmm. the definition. But in that case, when your nervous system is frozen and you are saying, oh, I need to rest as an avoidant tactic, what your body actually needs needs is movement Mm -hmm. because your energy when your nervous system is frozen it's like your energy in your body is actually frozen Mm -hmm. in order to get out of that state you have to move the energy in your body so for instance in your business that actually means taking action now Mm -hmm. i will say a disclaimer to that punking it down smaller actions to just get you in motion honestly is usually what the body needs start to pick Mm -hmm. up all of a sudden, if you are living in your truth and your purpose, actually taking these small actions are going to bring you back to life are going to actually invigorate you. Yeah. 
taking action and moving the energy is actually proof to your nervous system and your brain that you are safe. So what, what happens then when you're taking these many actions or following through on what you said you were going to do, your brain and body kind of back off, you know, those protective measures that they put in place to protect you. Now, all of a sudden it's like, oh, she's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, she's she's safe and those start they start to back off Mm -hmm. so all of a sudden you're feeling like more momentum and all of a sudden you know taking the action feels easier and now you have more energy because there's not that resistance that your brain your subconscious mind and your nervous system is Mm -hmm. up. so I think kind of getting to the root of that and really if, if their body is feeling depleted then obviously you and I know that rest is actually a needle moving activity yeah I encourage it but kind of getting to the root of it and tackling it based on what it is, right? And I also think you probably tell your clients this all the time. And I've cycle tracked for about two years now. I wouldn't call myself a complete expert, but I do teach it to my yeah. clients. But that's the beauty of cycle tracking, right? Mm-hmm able to know when you have the most energy throughout the month and when you're going to feel more depleted. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it takes the judgment and the self shame that you usually put on yourself that you can't move forward, you can't push through. Again, just being connected to your body and tracking your cycles and tracking your body and scheduling your month and then your weeks and then your days accordingly. Yeah, usually, honestly helps with the energy piece. And you know, as well as I do, I'm also board certified nutrition, If you're feeding your body, right, supplementing, doing the mindful practices, getting out in nature, all the things I mean, you should be feeling energy. And yeah. When you're not, that's where again, mind body business, let's look mm-hmm. at what's off in the diet, what's off in the movement, are you getting the connection? You know, are you stressed? Are you mm-hmm. stressed? Where are you in your cycle? So looking at all those pieces and then determining what's the next best step in the business. Is it to lean back or is it to move the energy and take some action? Yeah, and no, and I, I, it's funny is like you mentioned movement and like business movement, which also for me corresponds like actual physical movement, right? Like the other day I was feeling a little bit, not, I wouldn't say stuck, but in that kind of like, I needed clarity really was the answer. Like I was feeling stuck, but it was in the sense of like, I want the clarity. I'm not sure which direction I need to go. And so I, before, I went to work, I was like, I'm going to do some yoga. Like I need to just move my body. The same idea of like this trapped emotion, trapped energy somewhere in the body that by moving it helps it kind of release and helps it get its way out. And so I was telling a client of mine, I was like, I was so, I was like flowing with like clarity and ideas while I was doing yoga that I brought my notebook over and I was like jotting down as I was like downward dog, I'd like pause and like start scratching on the piece of paper because that's what I needed. I needed to actually create movement, not just in my business, but movement in my body because the movement in my body corresponded with movement in my business. And I think that's a big piece that a lot of business owners are missing, particularly women business owners, is that they'll skip their workouts. They'll you know, skip the luxury things because they have to get the work done when in reality, they're missing out on so much of that creativity and that movement in their business by missing that movement in their body. And I love that you and I kind of pull those two pieces together of your body is the vehicle for your business. (laughs) Like Your body is the thing that's driving your business. And so when we neglect that, we dishonor it, we avoid it, we stay up really late, we're not fueling it, we're not getting outside, we're locked into our little caverns of offices or whatever it might be, like it changes how you show up and it changes what you're capable of doing. And I think it's powerful. It's so transformational. 100%. I love that you brought that up in that story with yoga. And it is, it's movement of the body, Mm -hmm. which is changing the energy inside the body. And I love that you said, as soon as you started to move, the creativity came back, the inspiration came back. Mm Mm-hmm happens is when we skip the workouts or we skip the self-care, we skip eating right or skimp on our, our sleep. I just lost my train of thought. (laughs) No, what happens is when we do all those things, we're actually blocking Mm -hmm. the inspiration. We're blocking the creativity because what happens is when your stress response activated and it is in the, the state, it, it blocks your ability to 
think clearly, literally, it's like chaos in the mind and the body, you can't think straight, and you can't come up with new ideas, and you can't be creative. And so once you move the body, and especially through low impact exercise, like yoga or walks, I take clarity walks every day outside. Mm -hmm. It's a game changer. Mm -hmm. And you're right. If you are really taking care of your body, your business is going to grow tenfold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's such a huge game changer. And I think for a long time, that was me just being like, I just need to work harder. I just need to do it. I just need to hustle. I just need to, I need to get these things done. And I've grown to realize how backwards that was. And so I think that that's where it's just not necessarily bad. Like men function okay in that sort of a rhythm with their testosterone and the way they function. And just women are very different. So we just need to break out of that and do it a little bit differently. And I mean, men need that movement and they need their body, but it's it's a whole different ball game in how it functions and how it works. So Carrie, is there anything you feel like we've missed or you want to make sure we touch on before we wrap up this episode? I will just respond to what you just said real quick, because I think we're humans. And even mm-hmm. though you and I have come out the other side, and see the true formula to building a business, we all fall back into old patterns. 100%. Yeah. And so when that happens, just being kind to yourself and, Mm. you know, losing the shame around it, right? And going back to the foundational pieces of the self-care is truly going to be the game changer. Yeah, for sure. And self-care, and I think that that's where even too, like self-care looks so different for people, right? Like today I am at a low point in my cycle and my energy is super low and I have a full day of work today and a full day of work tomorrow. I don't know how I stacked that, just poor planning, but it happens, right? And so So for me, it's looking at like, what do I need to actually sustain that energy in when I know my body is biologically going to be low energy. And so it's infusing these small little micro moments of recharge and restoration throughout my day that may not look like I have a ton of time to go out, go to the spa or whatever it might be, but like the little micro moments of self-care throughout the day. And I think even just changing the way we look at self-care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Us as women, we can't, you know, it'd be ideal if we could just take two weeks off of the month and chill and then do our business the other two weeks, but it's not like that. So like you said, just doing what you can in little pieces in mm-hmm. falls and content creation, it does the trick, right? Yeah. I mean, regulating your nervous system can be in a second and also taking into consideration like seasons of your business. So right now I am in a big season where I am launching a lot of new stuff. So knowing that I am leaning in, I am taking action. And so getting really good about, and I hate self-care because it, it could mean like bubble baths and mm-hmm. I, for me, two things, like I have prioritized sleep and I have quit alcohol for, for the month because I have a big season and I want my body and my brain to be on point. So knowing your seasons and knowing the weeks and knowing what's important to you and your business and in your life and, you know, making those, those shifts accordingly, we're not going to be perfect yeah. all the time, but we definitely want that flexibility, like you said, but having it be a piece of the business formula is key. Yeah, for sure. Oh my goodness. Carrie, we could probably keep going on forever. I'm sure that you and I could just like chit chat about all things business and body and all of it wrapped up into one. If people want to follow up with you more and learn more about what you have going on and all of those different things, where can they do that? Yeah. So I'm at Carrie underscore on underscore confidently. So it's Carrie on confidently on Instagram and Facebook. And then website is Carrie on confidently.com. I would love to connect with everyone. And thank you so much for having me. This was an awesome conversation. Yes. I've loved it. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sure everybody's going to walk away with at least one thing that you can actually tangibly start doing differently this week to honor your body and look at how that impacts your business. In fact, I would even encourage anybody listening to take something and like commit to it. Like you just said, like getting rid of alcohol or prioritizing sleep, like choose something and then just kind of start tracking how that shifts and changes in your business, in your relationships, in your energy, wherever that might be. Absolutely. I am a huge nerd when it comes to numbers. So I am definitely tracking the difference (laughs) between April 1st and the 30th. Yes. See how these little tweaks can change the business. Makes very fast. Huge difference. Huge difference. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.